Welcome to C3 2018 in uh, beautiful Orlando, Florida. Uh, my name is Vinay Satwa. I'm an interventional cardiologist, and I co-chair the Venus Summit with Dr. Brian Cluck, who's to my right. And uh, it's a very exciting time for us, uh, where we'd love to share for a few moments uh, what's upcoming and why we think it's very important that you continue to be a part of this wonderful meeting and organization. Uh, Dr. Cluck, let me ask you a question. You know, with such an under-recognized disease entity, chronic venous insufficiency, somebody who wants to either dabble in it or wants to, you know, start to get a feel for it to establish it into their practice, what do you think they can take away from a meeting like this? Well, I think, Vin, I think that brings up a very good point. I think the, the uh, most important thing is to get your fundamentals down before you start. Many of us who worked in venous disease were involved in uh, peripheral arterial disease before that, for, sure. uh, for uh, uh, coronary intervention before that, and to learn uh, the rudiments of uh, venous insufficiency and to learn who to treat, who not to treat, what the principles are, what the pitfalls are. Exactly. Really, an important meeting like this to get the fundamentals is, is absolutely essential. I agree with you. It is such an, you're right, it's such an under-recognized disease process in our practices. We as cardiologists are seeing, you know, people with heart failure, we're seeing people who have coronary artery disease, but many of them are walking around with swelling of their legs, hyperpigmentation, discoloration, and nobody has ever asked them about it. And it's, it, it's remarkable that oftentimes you and I are the first clinicians that are actually asking them about why do your legs look the way they do? And isn't it remarkable that they go so long? Absolutely. They're, they're at the point where they're uh, seep category five, where they've had an ulcer and it's healed before they actually get to your doorstep. And they've been to clinicians five, six, seven in a yes. row who really have been perplexed by this disease process and even understanding the, the, the basic physical signs. Exactly. It's really, it's astonishing and, it, and, it is. and mystifying. It is. It is. And so I think, I agree with you, and I think that coming to a meeting like this where you have people who are passionate, like you or myself, uh, in the field of venous disease is important because we can then collaborate our experience and we can learn from one another. Now, Dr. Cluck, there's so much technology that's out there. I mean, you know, we started with the days of, you know, compression and compression stockings we know are very, very important, but slowly technology has evolved in such a way that we can help patients feel so much better with a 5, 10, 15 minute office procedure. Tell me what your thoughts are on the evolving modalities and, and where are we going in the future here? It's, it's, it's explosive. Yeah. Um, it's explosive to the point that not only do doctors know, not know about these new modalities, but insurance companies don't know about the new modalities. Exactly. There are procedures that have been out for four, five, six years, and they're still called experimental by yeah. insurance companies simply because not enough people know about them. Yeah. It's really very important to um, to uh, explore those new modalities, to have a toolbox that's filled with as many tools as you can to treat this disease entity, just like any other disease entity. Yes. They're all there, they're all available, um, uh, but it takes an awful lot to negotiate not only the skills that, it, uh, that are required to, to understand these new modalities, right. but also the payers and who's going to pay. Exactly. And so today, on Sunday, we had a wonderful Venus Summit, and we spoke about basic fundamentals of venous insufficiency. We all want to start at the same level. We don't want to assume that everybody knows all about venous insufficiency. So the beauty is, is that you're in a very comfortable setting where you're amongst, I'm gonna say it, you're amongst world-class leaders in venous insufficiency who are your peers who are giving talks but also there to ask questions and answer any questions. And I think that if you are going to be a leader or you want to get well in treating patients who have chronic venous insufficiency, you need to stay abreast of the literature and the technology. So tell me a little bit about your experience with uh, utilizing Clarivane and all these new non-thermal modalities that we spoke of today. I think that's exactly, that, that, that takes you exactly where you want to go. I would say, um, just looking at other uh, meetings, the C3 meeting has been one of the first meetings to actually embrace the, the venous disease in general. Exactly. Uh, and one of the things that I think um, we have prided ourselves on, and now coming up on our 15th year next year, uh, I think we can well pride ourselves in this, and that's that people aren't just on the podium. They're next to you uh, at, the, exactly. at the food line. They're next exactly. to you at the, at the uh, hallway outside. They're uh, with you 
every step of the way, and they're more than willing to, to discuss their experience with you. So, and, and, and not only that, you take that experience away, and uh, at other times, you contact these people, and sometimes you're invited to their laboratory or to their office to, to expand your experience. Exactly. But to your point, in regard to Clarivane or in regard to Varathena, these are the newest technologies that are available. Non-thermal is certainly the future of venous insufficiency, uh, at least superficial venous insufficiency. And to get involved in this and to understand where this is going, to get some experience, is absolutely essential. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And now switching gears into the deep venous realm, because Dr. Cluck, you know as well as I do, two, three, four years ago, deep venous insufficiency was one, maybe two lectures. Absolutely. Now we have grown into a whole meeting about deep venous disease, a whole session on deep venous disease. And today was very exciting because we had some world-class people, world-class speakers that were here from all over the country to give talks on their experience with iliac vein stenting, thrombotic lesions, non-thrombotic lesions, and how there is a need for evolving technology in the deep vein space. I know that you do a lot of deep vein work, Dr. Cluck. In your experience, what do you think the major limitation is with the present stents that we have available? Because during the day today, there was a lot of talk about we just don't have the technology that we need right now with stents as far as treating patients who have chronic deep venous insufficiency. What are your thoughts on that? I think I'd have to take you a step further back. I think that one of the things that you, that you have to emphasize is these are the sickest of the sick people, yeah. right? In terms of venous disease, venous insufficiency, superficial venous insufficiency, folks sometimes have ulcer disease, and you sure. certainly can make a, an awful lot of a dent in, in those people by treating their superficial disease. But some of these people with deep venous disease, their lives are ruined. They're absolutely... Uh, in, their, in the late stages of the disease with, uh, with multiple trips to wound care on, 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 on any every given week. Yes. And they are really, really sick folks. Yes. And they really, uh, they go to wound care and oftentimes in wound care, they're treated for their wound, but that becomes an endless, an endless problem. Yes, it becomes a vicious cycle. And, and you don't ever get out of it. Developing and, the wound, right? And, and unless we work together as a profession, not right. only uh, venous interventionalists, but also clinical cardiologists, yes. clinical vascular surgeons, clinical interventional radiologists, and, and uh, general radiologists, general practitioners, general cardiologists. Everybody has to recognize the disease, recognize where something is awry, something isn't just superficial venous insufficiency, right. and then get to the point of treating it. Exactly. You're right, though. Once we get to that point, just like with superficial disease, as we begin to scratch the surface of right. this devastating disease, Right. we have all kinds of problems we have all kinds of issues with the technology that's there in terms of diagnosis mm -hmm. many vascular surgeons who have been treating this disease for years rely on a venogram which is absolutely not the way to not the way to diagnose this right. problem right. but we need to bring everybody into speed in terms of the diagnostics yes. and then go on to uh, uh, the, the, the modalities to treat it that are available now, be it balloon or the classic uh, uh, wall stent. But in fact, just like in coronary disease two decades ago, the things that we learned about uh, coronary artery stenting were you needed to, number one, see the stent. Right. And number two, know when that when that when you deployed the stent, that's where it was going to be. Right. We're not there yet exactly. in terms of venous disease, and the consequences are oftentimes really quite quite serious. You're absolutely so, right. So so this is um, while it's very exciting for us, it's also very frustrating because we unfortunately don't have the industry backing and the understanding of how devastating this is right. in order for them to spend a, a priority. Uh, both in terms of time and money, to develop stents that we can see, yeah. that will be large enough to treat this disease process, right. um, that will be accurate enough to treat it without having distal consequences. Right. It's a really, really very exciting it, time. It's a very exciting but time. Challenging. You're right. very challenging. But challenging. Very challenging. You're absolutely right, Dr. Kluck. A meeting like C3, the C3 cardiology conference meeting, is just not about cardiologists. That's the beauty of this meeting. It's a multidisciplinary approach to vascular disease. It's cardiologists, it's vascular surgeons, interventional radiologists, radiologists, general cardiologists, podiatrists, nurse practitioners, PAs, whoever is interested, all in the same room who are passionate about vascular disease. One of the topics that was brought up today in the meeting was the lack of radial strength with the 
current deep vein stents that are available. And unfortunately, fortunately or unfortunately, that's how medicine involves. It's an off-label utilization of a stent that was not, you know, to its credit, it was not made for the vascular system. But there's lack of radial strength, and many people had brought that up as to when are we going to get new stent technology? What is in the pipeline? I know that there are various, various uh, vendors out there that are working diligently on giving us a ideal deep vein stent. What do you think is the ideal deep vein stent? I would say one that has a great radial strength, right. that has a little bit of variability to, the, to, to, its, to its radial strength. And as I said, the most important thing, I take that back, not the most important thing, but one of the very important things is accuracy. Absolutely. I think that, um, that uh, if the stent can be accurately placed, has appropriate radial strength at the points where, where necessary, and it's much flexibility in the points where it's, uh, where it's necessary, all very important. Because remember, the venous system is not the arterial system. Right. The venous system is not a fire hose, it's, it's a not. drinking straw. And as a result, there has to be a great deal of compliance that was, that's built into the system that's going to support that very compliant vascular system. It's a completely different entity. Absolutely. Dr. Kluck, this has been fantastic. I'm looking forward to the next day of our Venus Summit, uh, but hopefully you all have seen the passion that we have. We hope that you join us in 2019 at the C3 Cardiology Conference. Join, please, Dr. Kluck and myself, and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Thank you.